a lot of people, money is considered a hush-hush subject, but it doesn't have to be. Personal finance is relevant to every aspect of our lives. So it's a basic life skill, just like learning how to ride a bike or learning how to drive a car. Providing personal finance across all schools in the country allows everyone to be on the same playing level. We only get one life, so why would you not want to take a course that helps you understand a key aspect of life, like finances? We need to focus on improving the way we educate people about financial literacy and encouraging people to take these classes and learn about this important concept. My name is Nazaya Osai, and I graduated from Parkdale High School, a part of the illustrious class of 2020. So probably when a lot of people think about DC, you're thinking about the Capitol, the White House, the Monument, all the historical buildings. But from someone that grew up in DC, those things are there, but that's not my everyday. A lot of people in DC, they're suffering from the, the rent hikes, the, the gentrification going on there, and the monument isn't saving them from that. There is a strong sense of the haves and the have nots in DC. And the part of DC that I grew up in, you see people that are just trying to make it to the next month. We're here at Parkdale High School. We're in Prince George's County, Maryland, in the small town of Riverdale. And this neighborhood is predominantly lower middle class to middle class. We don't have a lot of students who actually go to college and get all the way through it. There wasn't a lot of people, as some would say, had a silver spoon where their family took care of everything. Essentially, all the friends that I had growing up, we all had jobs. We all see it. We see our parents work. We see how our parents feel when they get the paycheck and then they get the bills and they have to start doing their own different equations to make sure that they have enough to eat, for to enjoy life, and still always seem to have more month than they actually do have money. I met Naziah as a junior in high school. He was put into my elective financial literacy semester class. And I saw my schedule, financial literacy for teens. I'm like, what is financial literacy for teens? What, what is this? He was one of those that kind of looked at it like, mm, okay, what can I transfer out of here and go do? A lot of young people aren't thinking about the future right now because, you know, we're young, we're partying, whatever. And I told him on the first day, you've been in school a really long time. You've learned a lot of stuff. And when you leave here, you may never quote Shakespeare, you might not ever use the Pythagorean theorem, but you are gonna use every concept I teach you in this class every day for the rest of your life. Naziah took that really to heart and he stuck it out, he stayed in financial literacy. And I took the class and it was like, Phew. it was the most important class I had taken in all of high school because it actually translated to the things I was gonna eventually face and the things that I was already facing now in my life. Until my junior year of taking the financial literacy class had nothing to do with finance. Ever since then, I've gone full pedal to the metal. Of August of 2021, I started an Instagram page called That's Clearly Wealth. With your financial goals, that's still happening. You still need to get those done. You still need to achieve them because you plan on being around. You are your biggest financial bet. I create shorts about the different financial knowledges I've learned in my life, but also have applied in my life. How do you make sure that you don't spin the bag faster than you actually secure it? The 50-30-20 rule, I think that people are honestly ready to talk about it, but there's no atmosphere to have that conversation in the first place. So well, the way I approach it is that I listen to people because if I just hit them with financial information that's not related to their lives right now, then they're not gonna be as interested as the problem that they're having today. Whatever you wanna do in life, finances is there. You have to deal with it. And not being able to manage it, not being able to understand it can cost you a lot. And seeing a bunch of people like that growing up, still seeing people in my life like that, it hurts. We think, you know, because we're young and we have a lot of time ahead of us that it can wait, but it's gonna come.
My name is Ella Gupta. I'm 17. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh is a bit of a suburban community. There's lots of parks. It's the capital of North Carolina. All four of my grandparents immigrated from India to the United States. My grandparents on my father's side immigrated due to lack of opportunity. On my maternal grandfather's side, he saw the economic disparity and they also came for education. They came with $24 total. I attend Cary Academy in Cary, North Carolina, which is about 30 minutes from where I live. It's a college prep school, and there are about 110 students per grade, so it's pretty small, and everyone knows each other by name. We have a really vibrant student body. They're very aware of the world um, in ways that I certainly wasn't as a student. I like to teach workshops by partnering with local community organizations, most of which serve low-income students. I've also focused some of my workshops on girls. She recognized the issue that a lot of females have a financial literacy, which makes them vulnerable to financial abuse and being dependent on someone else for a secure future financially. Girls often experience financial injustice starting at an early age, as early as age 13, when most young girls are in middle school. And she wanted to come up with a way to reach out. So she's already spoken with other students at different schools, and she really wanted to target our middle school population here. When I was learning about money, I struggled to find a single comprehensive resource that would cover all the topics that I wanted to learn about. Most financial resources are created by members of older generations who don't understand my generation very well, so I wrote my book to fill that gap. My goal with my book is to teach core financial principles in a relatable, engaging way geared toward my generation. And I think this book is, and all the things that she's been doing, that's just one of the ways that she's been reaching out to others and using her own gifts to do that. The advice that she gives to young people about how to invest, what to look for, that's really important advice that a lot of students don't get. That all students get exposed to that, I think that would be so helpful. I've launched an online petition to advocate for guaranteed access to a semester-long personal finance course for all high school students in all 50 states. I want this petition to help launch a grassroots movement among Gen Z and kind of unite this interest. It is crucial for our American students to have a chance to understand compound interest and understand that when you have a 30-year mortgage, you end up paying for your house twice. And what happens with these credit cards if you're only paying the minimum balance? This is something that affects your day-to-day -day and most importantly, affects your future. I want to level the financial playing field and empower my generation with knowledge to make smart, informed choices. My name is Olivia Wall. I just graduated from Oconomowoc High School and I live in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Horseback riding has been an outlet for me for a really long time, about since I was nine. It allows me to take some time to myself and relax by grooming and riding and just really bonding and connecting with those animals. One of the slogans of Oconomowoc is life comes naturally here. We have a lot of trails, a lot of lakes, beautiful lake country area. We have a lot of small local businesses that help our local economy flourish. And that's part of why personal finance education is so important for students here. Today I have with me two outstanding students. We are all here to speak in support of Bill 899. Early 2022, I, along with a few students, were asked to testify in favor of Bill AB 899 to mandate personal financial education for all Wisconsin high school graduates. My name is Olivia Wall, and I'm a senior at Oconomowoc High School. And I'm here to talk on behalf of the passing of Bill AB 899. Olivia is just an all-star student. 
She truly embodies what it means to take career, college, and life readiness and prepare herself for whatever's coming next. I knew that she feels really passionate about personal financial literacy and that she would have some strong stories to share with our legislators. If you don't have good role models in regards to money management, you're more likely to repeat the same money mistakes that they once did. As an 18-year-old, I have an IRA account, a checking and savings account, money invested in mutual funds, as well as a credit card to build good credit. This would not have been a reality for me without the resources that my personal finance class has provided me with. I am passionate about personal finance because it is something that is used in everyday life. High school is when financial decisions start. This is the first time students really have spending money that they probably earned on their own. This is also when if you choose to go on to college, you'll be signing student loans, a huge financial impact on the rest of your life. It's important to educate before you have to make those big decisions. Otherwise, you're gonna have to be learning from mistakes rather than learning from others' mistakes. Personal finance is important because you need that money the rest of your life and you need to know how to manage it. So often I hear people say things like, well, they should have taught that in high school or I wish I would have learned how to do my taxes. And being a high school teacher, I never wanna hear that again. The real world starts today, it starts now. The sooner kids are given the tools to be successful with personal finance and money management, the sooner they are able to be successful. My name is Jacob Diepenbrock. I'm a recent graduate of Glacier Peak High School just north of Seattle. I love the outdoors. I love mountain biking. I live in a great state to do that. When I was pretty young, my grandpa, um, who worked at a bank for about 20 to 30 years, he had access to a lot of coins when he was, when he was younger working as a teller, which led to me developing my coin collection. He worked with me for countless hours to build it out, and he started to talk with me a little bit more about it. We started to kind of talk about stocks, talk about the uh, financial news. Um, and from there, he kind of gave me some tips, some books to read that I began to pour into. It definitely kind of, I guess, skyrocketed my interest in that area. I've been learning a lot about investing and about the whole investment industry. And I realized that I might want to pursue a career in here. And I know that other people at my school had an interest in investing and stuff like that as well. So in 2019, I started the Young Investors Network um, right after my school closed down for COVID. And then we'll have two more speakers. Again, a Q&A portion for each one. But there wasn't a lot of organizations like this at the time. Um, there were a few organizations that were run by people who were much older, who had much more experience in the investment industry, but there wasn't many organizations that allowed people who are the same age to kind of work together. Young Investors Network educates uh, young individuals, students, high school students particularly, on uh, financial literacy and also fiscal responsibility. What we do is we put on a lot of events with more locally facing speakers. Like Young Investors Network was really focused on bringing in speakers from a variety of different experiences. Speakers like CCO of HP, um, CTO of Azure at Microsoft, CEO of Eddie Bauer, some really exciting speakers that have been able to share like a lot of valuable insight on how they got to their positions. For about the same reward, you end up taking like twice the risk, which of, as a, you know, any investor is gonna tell you like, okay, don't make that investment then. My friend encouraged me to try something new. I don't know a lot about personal finance and investing, so it's been really interesting kind of getting a taste into this world. Being able to just listen to these speakers, speak to them afterwards, and then also meet with other students who are kind of interested in like a business or tech um, route and see like all of our interests come together. High school is a unique transition in that it is a transition to adulthood. Students, especially this age where college is such a huge deal in life, need to make more financially sound decisions. A lot of people take classes that don't really have a real impact on their lives in the real world. So by having this um, education before you actually leave home and go to college or enter the workforce, it'll allow students to be prepared to enter the real world. My name is Jasper Carter. I'm a high school senior. I live outside of Santa Fe up in Glorieta with my mother and my sister. Santa Fe and New Mexico as a whole, it's generally seen as this sort of desert 
but there's life everywhere. It's beautiful, it's sunny, there's loving families, delicious food. There's a lot that I love to do. I love to write, I love art, drawing, theater. I kind of learned the value of financial literacy like several years before taking the class. I think it was when my dad and mom first divorced. Money was really, really tight. For that time, we were actually under the poverty line and oftentimes it would be really scary. It would be scary to, you know, would we have food? Personal financial literacy knowledge could have helped us, starting with learning how to budget. It could have been a lot better. I want to share that with other people. I want other people's situations to be able to be better. <laughs> My high school, Capital High School, it's, it's one of the biggest high schools here. It's got a lovely family feel. Everyone's really close, and it's a really supporting environment, too. <laughs> Jasper is the epitome of a student who has intellectual curiosity. Jasper likes to delve deeper into subjects and is not satisfied with just what's in the textbook. We read some really interesting books and we did a lot of personal finance education, which was how I got interested in it in the first place. And she was just teaching it all in a way that made us really understand how important it was. Jasper has exceptional writing ability. So I and another teacher encouraged Jasper to take an internship with our local paper, the Santa Fe New Mexican. The very first article they wrote was about personal finance. Integrating personal financial literacy classes goes beyond just teaching students valuable life skills. For New Mexicans, it could be extremely important to aid the break from systemic poverty. I was really motivated to write it because throughout learning from my own personal financial literacy class, I was also learning how kind of sparse the knowledge is. My experience in classes taught me financial skills even my mother doesn't have. I learned how to take responsibility with money, better avoid debt, and budget my income. I was literally blown away by that because as a teacher, you don't often think that you have an impact on your students. But when I read it, I realized that they really got it. A lot of people in New Mexico are under the poverty line and they need to know how to give themselves the best shot at life. The ripple effects of this class are far reaching. They are going home and having conversations with their parents. They are making connections between what am I learning in class, what's going on at home. I'm passionate about personal finance because it, it has a lot to do with my life. It really touched me throughout like the middle of my childhood and I learned about how, how powerful it can be. What young people can do to advocate for the personal finance classes that I've taken that they may take in the future is to really flex that knowledge. Figure out if there's a way to bring in a personal finance or investment education course into your school. Write letters to their state governments to ask for this critical course and talk about how they see how it would connect to their own real lives. And that's really important. When someone hears you, they hear your point and they get interested too. So they take it into their own hands and they learn or they learn from you. Put your voice out there. Make your voice heard about personal finance. And social media is always good too. Spread the word. That's how any big movement happens, and that's how change occurs. Mm -hmm.